We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. Another week closer to fall camp. How many? How are you doing? How many? Uh, do do the Tom Moore thing. How many days out are we? Uh, well, I was wrong. So the Sloop Cats uh, corrected me. We are, well, as this is being released, it'll be 54 days. 54 days Ohio on, State on release day. I know. I know. Giving you. Giving you guys credit. Jeez, Al. Come on, Austin. See, it's it's not as funny when they turn on you, is it? <laughs> Welcome to my world. All, All right, right, Jared, what do we got today? Uh, today we have uh, we have camp coming up. We almost talked about Northwestern. Cal talked me out of it. Let's just yeah, Let, let's let's talk about I, I, I just got pissed off. Honestly, this would have gotten pissed off. So I know, no, and, and Kyle knows. Kyle knows better than I know that that was a bad idea for me to partake in um, this 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 early. So we're gonna we're gonna stick to Ohio State. Yes, get the pitchforks out. We're gonna we're gonna stick to Ohio State for today. Um, we as as Kyle just pointed out, as the chat pointed out, we're very close to the season, which means we're very, very close to camp. And those first couple weeks of camp, Kyle, are crucially important because that's when the position battles are settled. That's when the yeah, depth chart is settled. That then you have to start putting the system in. Then you then you have to start preparing for those games in September. So the first couple of weeks are crucial. So what time is better than right now to start talking about where the depth chart is and where we think it will be, including Kyle, some position battle talk. Yeah. And of course, Jared's favorite yes. position battle to talk about and oh. probably one of the most critical this year. The offensive tackles. Yes, the offensive tackles. But that's not and for Austin. Kyle. And for Austin, it's the running back position. If for Austin, it's the running back position. Kyle, what's it for you? For me, yeah, it's it's the, yeah, it's the offensive line. Yeah, especially the tackles. I I agree. I agree with that. It's last year was kind of just pretty set in stone. This year, it's like, all right, we we know the interior, but what's what's the what's the tackles going to look like here? So, yeah. Um, the correct answer is offensive tackle. I mean, as far as, I mean, the question started, what's your favorite to talk about? And I always love talking about the offensive line. It is, it is my, but, it is my favorite to talk about. Um, but if we're, but it's but if we're going to play, but if we're going to play the, um, if we're the going to play um, this year, listener favorites here, Jared, the favorite to talk about is the tight end position. Is that the favorite for the listeners? The tight end position? Or at least we the sweep a, cats. We have a returning there. starter there that that might not be like, or 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 do we? I mean, we do. But Kyle, let's 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 start. Let's start with the public. This is this is this is where the casuals always want us to start. The quarterback. This mm -hmm. is not officially set yet. There was officially. Yes, officially not set. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think Kyle and I, if you go back and listen to like our pre-camp depth chart preview going into spring camp, um, Kyle and I were pretty heavily leaning towards McCord. It was his job to lose. Um, officially through the spring, n no one was no one was marked a starter. I, I had definitely heard through the grapevine on a, a few on a few occasions that McCord was separating himself, but that was always unofficial talk. That was always insider talk. Um, then Devin Brown got hurt. Didn't get to see him in the spring game. Um, 
I, I, I think we were all in agreement that essentially Devin Brown was going to have to go and steal the starting position. And unfortunately, it's very hard to do that if you get hurt and you don't play in the spring game. He did get hurt late in camp, so it's not like he missed all of camp. Mm -hmm. He did miss the spring game. He did get hurt. Um, if it wasn't solidified, if it wasn't already a hard lean towards Kyle McCord, I, I, I think the injury probably solidifies it even if it solidifies his, his role as the starter unofficially. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I'm, if I'm a betting man right now, Jared. Not put it on number six. Don't realize put, Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Put it on number six there. Put it all in number six, says the guy who's a betting man now, apparently. Um, but it would be Devin kind of Brown cool seeing, probably but it would be kind of cool seeing a number 33 behind center taking snaps, though. <laughs> well, you never know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jack Sawyer plays some quarterback this year. Well, okay, I, I see what you did there. Maybe I see what you did there. No, but but Devin Brown's going to be your backup. I think you will see a 33. I think you, you I think you, Devin Brown's not going to like he wasn't hurt so bad. He's going to miss the season. Um, they're going to want to get him reps here and there. Um, I, I even if it's like late game blowouts or whatnot. And of course, Kyle McCord could get hurt. It happens. It's 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 football. People get hurt. So, I mean, you know, you could I, I still think Devin Brown is your solid number two. Um, yeah. I don't think uh, Tristan uh, is it Jebia. I believe is is how you pronounce his, his last name. I, I I don't think he's going to be jumping Devin Brown. Um, so I, I I think I think we'll see Devin Brown take some some snaps. I agree. At minimum, we see a lot of number thirty three handling the ball handing handing the ball off this year. Uh, it depends on what you mean by a lot. <laughs> um. And it also just depends on how Kyle McCord, like, does Kyle McCord need the reps? They might keep, you know, just, you never know. Um, Devin Brown will do Ohio State thing of throwing 15 passes this season. That that feels about right. <laughs> Many blowouts, all positive vibes. That's, that's fair, Esquire. I mean, we do have uh, running back depth. Th that we do. And speaking of Kyle, thank, thanks, thanks for the transition, Zach. Running backs. Um, there's a whole lot of good running backs on this team, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, there is. Like, there's, there's five, there's five running backs here that I'd feel comfortable back, back there, though, back taking um, the snaps, though. Now, now there, not, there's a couple that I feel great. I'd feel great. There's a couple I'd feel great back there, but you got five um, very solid running backs. You'd feel good taking the snaps. I, I think I think I think you have four legitimate starters at running back on the team right now. With all due respect, Chip Trainum, who I like. Um, I think if we are going into the season is with him as the starter, I don't I don't feel like we would feel great about that. But as a second or third running back, when in reality, he's the fifth running back, I would say, mm -hmm. if we're predicting the depth chart, um, I, I think that he's fantastic. A live over under with no research. Um, sure. Go for it. Get a live over under for number of carries that by the third string back for the season. Oh, geez. That, I hope we don't see what we saw last year, though. <laughs> you only got with we talked about this a lot during the offseason and the, the, the recaps of last season. The only we haven't seen that many carries by a third string running back in years. Like going Long back to the, time. it was it went back to the 80s and was because of injuries. Um, yep. 
I asked to illustrate the point that I think they rolled deep at running back this year. Maybe. Um, I'll say 37 and a half. I think that's a good number. Yeah. Um, if we're talking specifically carries, I'll say under. If we're talking touches, I'll go over. Because Evan Pryor, who I think is probably the third running back on the team right now. If you look at the four running backs, I think he gets the third most snaps at least. Because I don't. I think three guys get significant snaps that I agree with. Um, I, I think that they're going to find a way to put Evan Pryor on the field, despite the fact that he's the third string running back. Um, there, he might play some slot receiver. He might play some two back. He might play some third downs where he's primarily a block pass threat or a block receive threat rather. Um, Hayden will find the field if not. Well, okay. You guys are like, Hey, I want a bunch of the running backs to carry. Gee, I really hope that the third and fourth guy see carries and see the field a lot. But you understand to do that, you have to take Trevion Henderson off the field to do that. You have to take mine Williams off the field. So it's, it's nice to say, I want to see so-and-so on the field, but in doing so you're taking other guys off the field. It's big boy college football. We don't split snaps evenly here. Well, we, we've seen in previous years, too, where well, last year, too, especially with all the injuries that Ohio State had at running back. When you had running backs somewhat healthy, you saw a series go to Henderson and the next one went to Mayan Williams. And then that third one, oh, maybe Mayan Williams uh, stayed back there for the third for the third series. And all of a sudden you may see the, the third running back come in too. So I don't know, de depending on really how well uh, prior does here, um, we, we may see something like that too. Sure. I mean, I think there's an opportunity for Evan prior to work his way onto the field. I, that's absolutely a possibility. Um, I still believe that Trevion Henderson is the best running back on this team. And I know he had hurt. I know he got hurt last year and I know that he didn't look like the best running back last year at times due to his injuries that he played yeah. through. He played through those injuries and I think people gave him shit for it because he didn't look like himself. Um, but I think he's the best running back on this team. Uh, I, I think Evan Pryor has the opportunity to steal some of those second string carries away from mine Williams. Uh, I think that will be a very interesting battle to watch. Uh, I, I think so to me, this depth, if we're, okay, we're talking about the depth chart, if we're talking about the depth chart at running back. I think Henderson's running back number one, and I don't think that's much of a conversation. I know a lot of people but, are talking about that. Henderson had a sophomore year just like J.K. Dobbins did his sophomore year. Wasn't as great as the freshman year. No. But then coming back the junior year and just had a had a hell of a season here. Right. Yep. But I would say in defense of Trevion Henderson, he was hurt. I don't believe J.K. Dobbins was hurt his sophomore year. Um, True. But... Again, the if we're talking about the depth chart, which is what we're doing, I think the more interesting battle here is what happens behind Trevion Henderson. That's what's it, that's that's what's more interesting here to me. Um, can Evan Pryor equalize himself with Mayan Williams? Because like I, I see Austin down in the chat and his his name in the discord currently is Evan Pryor Stan. So um, may, maybe take some of his opinions here with a grain of salt. He's down there lobbying hard. Are we projecting the depth chart or saying what we would do? Um, Evan Pryor has the most talent of anyone in the running back room. Um, I think he has the most versatile talent of anyone in the running back room. 
I, I think Evan Pryor is the most versatile running back in the running back room right now. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean he's the best carrier of the football. I, which, again, is why I think that we see. You don't know that, Austin. I'm sorry. You, you, you don't know that. We've seen Travion do it on the field. We haven't seen Evan Pryor do it on the field yet. Could we? Sure. Again, he will have that opportunity. He don't forget. Yeah. He's also. Not a full year off of an ACL. Yeah, you're right. I, the depth charts, Hayden, Pryor, Williams, and Trey as your starter. Uh, week five. What was this? Um, week five, Pryor, Trey. Yeah, no, I don't see if, if Travion stays healthy, he's running back one. Correct. That's yeah, all right, Jared. Let's <clears throat> let's talk about the wide receivers here. Oh, this, this uh, is th this is going to be. God, you think we're loaded at the running backs, which we are. But damn, the wide receivers. Um I think you have two dedicated starters. Yep. Um, your X and your X and slot are yeah. pretty much solidified there with Harrison and Ibuka. Yeah. And then you look at the you look at your uh, you look at your uh, your Z re, uh, receiver here, and I, I think you got to give the nod to Fleming. Yeah. yeah. Fleming will start if if Fleming's healthy. Fleming will start. Um, yes. So if we're talking strictly like starter, I think Fleming's pretty solidified. Yeah. But I also think Jaden Ballard's going to see a lot of snaps. I, I think Jaden Ballard will be a, the essentially the team's fourth wide receiver. Well, let, let's not rule out. Let's not rule out the uh, the Swiss Army knife. Xavier Johnson. Yeah. Could we see more Mecca, Buka, and Fleming routes with McCord at the helm? Um, I don't know what you mean by Fleming and I mean they're they're opposites because essentially Fleming is going to be playing the very deep most of the time. We'll be running the deeper routes. And Emeka Buka is going to be running the most shallow routes. Um, X is a feel good story with room. Now he won't play as much as he uh, might in other years. And I love X. I agree. I, I want nothing but the best for Xavier Johnson, but there's just right now where I have a Xavier, uh, Xavier Johnson is number two behind Emeka Buka in the slot. And I have Brandon Ennis right behind him. <laughs> um, and Ennis isn't going to sit patiently and wait for his time to come. And this is going to go out there and he's going to steal some some field time. And that's going to come at the expense of Xavier Johnson. Um, and again, I, I, I love Xavier Johnson, but. And I want to see Xavier Johnson on the field, but do I want to see Xavier Johnson on the field if that means seeing less Brandon Ennis on the field? No, it's not. Uh, it, that, that, it, that, that, that's not how I feel. <laughs> um, sorry. I, uh, you get uh, Xavier more reps at returning. Potentially. Well, we, we, have, we have returners on the list. We'll get the returners uh, at the end of the show. Um, because right now, if we're doing a two deep at X, I personally have Harrison and Antwi. Um, I have at the Z, I have Fleming, then Ballard. At the Y, I have for now Abuka and Xavier Johnson. Although I say that 
acknowledging that Ennis is going to end up being the number two there before too long in the season. If we if we're talking week one. Xavier Johnson's probably your backup in the slot. If we're talking about October, November, it's it's probably in us. Um, yeah, and I I agree. I agree. I got I got I got nothing to to change about that. Yeah, that's pretty much what I what I was thinking right now as your as your depth chart for the wide receivers. Now for 2020, 2024 starters of Tate, Ballard, and Ennis with backups of Rogers, Smith, and Antwi is going to go crazy. I I, I don't disagree. <laughs> um yeah. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the wide receivers are stupid deep right now. It's absolutely stupid deep. Um Let's see. Yeah, I, 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 I meant it both ways. And you're right. 24, 2024 group is going to be fucking insane. Yeah, that is insane. Bonkers love it. Yeah, it's just you're going to lose so much talent out of the wide receiver room this year. Um, and it's I don't want to say it's not going to hurt because Marvin Harrison at this point feels like a generational wide receiver talent. So, uh, yeah, it'll hurt. But Man, it's not going to hurt that bad. <laughs> it's it's going to kind of hurt. That's about it. Yep. Tight yep. end. All right. Year of the tight ends. I have currently Cade Stover, then G Scott, then Joe Royer um, as my three yep. deep. Um, yep. I, I think there's the question of how. Are they going to play as much fullback this year as we've seen last year? And who plays that position? It'll probably be a tight end. Well, how about, how about this? Depending on how the offensive line does, determines how much fullback we'll see. I think I think that's what we're ultimately going going to happen. If we're starting to see the offensive line struggle more, we'll we'll start seeing seeing Stover or Royer. Um, maybe motion back to help to help um to help block. I mean, you can you can block from the tight end position as well, obviously. But <laughs> don't don't forget, G Scott is the fourth best fullback in the country per Phil Steele. I I saw that. Um, <laughs> I I I I don't I don't know what Phil Steele is saying there. He listen either he knows something that uh, apparently none of uh, at least Kyle and I don't know or um <laughs> my favorite offseason boondoggle thus far if that's the biggest <laughs> controversy of the Ohio State offseason I'll take it yes um, Kyle yeah no we're not we're not we're not talking about northwestern we're not talking about northwestern um but yeah I I, I think if if you look at the if you look at the tight ends, I think the most fullback looking guy in the room is Cade Stover. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Um I think that G. Scott and Joe Royer have both been trying to get themselves on the field for a while now. Um and and Thurman is going to be a monster. I don't know if he's a monster yet. I don't know how yeah. much of an impact he Not has yet. this year, but he's going to be a monster at Ohio State. Yep. Okay, Kyle. The offensive line. All right. Well, let's 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 get the um let's get the easy ones here. Okay. Uh, Donovan Jackson left guard. Yep. Matt Jones, your right guard. Yeah. Um I wouldn't I don't but I don't think it's crazy that the Mahi challenges for that spot mm -hmm. um just gonna say that i don't think that's i don't think that's totally outside the realm of possibilities will matt jones uh still have the flippo the clown shoes this year i don't know what that means um center redshirt freshman carlos hinsman Versus Redshirt Junior Jacob James. 
Yeah, I know, I know we talked. I know we talked about the tackles. Like, ooh, who's going to be? Who's going to be the tackles here? Ooh, that, that's that's center position though, Jared. Yeah, and they went I, out and they got a uh, transfer uh, mm-hmm. to come in and challenge at the center position. But um, I'm still thinking it's Hensman personally. I, I think it'll be. I think it'll be one of the established Buckeyes. My my depth chart right now is Hinsman then James. Um, which is a big deal because Hinsman's one of the youngest guys in the room as far as the sun. It probably is the youngest guy in the room as far as the centers are concerned. Um, I, I, but I do think it's Hinsman. I think he looked good in the spring. We'll see if that translates into fall camp. Uh, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Hinsman at center, I think. Okay. All right, yeah, I but I wouldn't be shocked if James wins it. But I do think it's Hensman. Yeah, it's well, I mean, we'll Yeah, I, th- I think yeah, I think we'll go with uh I'll go with Hensman that will get the nod to start the season here and I mean, if I if I'm Ryan Day, I I'd, I'd let him I let him ride. Let let him ride for the for the season here unless just absolutely just crap craps the bed here and then you have to put in uh jacob james so i i think i think uh the starter will be carson at center here so mentioned donovan left guard um right guard we had matt jones so so much inexperience so we got, we got that a lot. scares me says zach yeah yeah so so we got we got a lot of name we got a lot of names that we can um, put into these uh, tackles here. So, so let's let's start with the right tackle here. Uh, you so have right. San Diego State transfer uh, Josh Simmons, who, mm-hmm. in my opinion, I, I think you brought him in specifically to start, um, but I don't feel like he's a left tackle. I think he is a a pretty set in stone right tackle. Uh, so I think I, to me that the, the most sure I am about anything as far as the offensive tackles are concerned is, is Josh, Shim, Josh Simmons at right tackle. Mm-hmm. You would have to move yeah, Fryer I, to left tackle. Fryer's already at left tackle. Yep. Fryer's going to be, yeah, I, I have down, my notes here. I got I got Fryer at left tackle, and yes, John Josh Simmons uh, plugging in here for the right tackle here. But definitely keep your eye out for for Zen and Tegra to uh, to potentially fight over that that uh, right tackle position though. But I I think right now the nod's going to go to Josh Simmons. Yeah, uh, I I think yeah. I mean I. I, I there's there's four guys and there's two spots and I I do think as as Kyle just said I do think it's Fryer at left and Simmons at right. Uh I I think Zen Mikowski is a future starter for Ohio State. I don't know but I don't I don't think redshirt sophomore Zen Mikowski is a starter at Ohio State. Richard Jr. Zen Mikowski is a different conversation for a different season. Um, but I, but I don't, I don't know if he's the guy you want starting at left tackle right now for Ohio state. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. Yeah. And, and, and Tegra, uh, Tesha Bola is, I think he's a dedicated right tackle. I don't, I don't know if the athleticism is there to play left tackle against some speed rushers. I think he's a dedicated right tackle. And I, I, I I do give the nod to Josh Simmons in that battle. Fair enough. All right. Uh, I don't know if we said it. I think Ben Chrisman is Donovan Jackson's backup at left guard. Yep. All right, Kyle, that is the offense. Let's talk about the defense. Kyle, I think the uh, defense. You have a lot more returning think, starters on the defense. Um, yeah, I, I, I honestly think the, uh, 
the defensive line, at least your starting four, I think is pretty set. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe there's one, maybe there's one position you can maybe you can give to, but I mean, you got, you got 44 and 33 on the, on the edges there. Uh, JT yeah. and Jack. And then you and, got and Sawyer will be playing dedicated defensive end this year. Uh, they played him a lot at Jack last year. Do not expect to see that as much mm-hmm. or maybe even at all this year. Um, he's going to be a straight ahead defensive end this year, which I think yep. is a better fit for him. And then your uh, your defensive tackle here is uh, Tyleek. I think Tyleek is going to be your your defensive tackle. Nose tackle, and then we could give the edge to Mike Hall. Yeah, right now, but I no. I think you'll see you'll see you'll see Mike Hall and Hamilton um, get some um, split reps here. But I'm, it's I'll defensive tackle. Hall. There'll always be some split reps. That's that's just how you do at defensive line in big boy college football, but Mike Hamilton's the guy with all due respect to Ty Hamilton, excuse me, Mike Hall is the guy with all due respect to Ty Hamilton, who I really like. It's just that Mike Hall has like top 10 draft potential, top 15, top 10 draft potential. Like Mike Hall, again, much, much like what we saw with uh, Travion Henderson, had he been able to stay healthy all year, I think we see a totally different season out of him last year, but he got hurt, got banged up, uh, did not get, was not a hundred percent during the second half of last year. Um, you see, and you know, from the defensive tackle position, let's all remember that, uh, Tywin Malone, who, if you listen to our recruiting episodes a few years back, you know, was a big loss for Ohio state, um, has transferred in from Ole Miss, uh, he's back. He's dedicated on football. Now, one of the reasons why I went to Ole Miss instead of Ohio States is because he was trying to do football and baseball. Well, he's laser focused on football. Now he makes the transfer to Ohio state, which I, I believe I saw an interview that basically said, had it been a purely football decision during his recruitment process, he probably would have picked Ohio state, but wanted to do Ole Miss baseball. Um, so you know, Tyleek Williams and Tywin Malone, I think you'll see a pretty healthy rotation there. And you look at the defensive ends, there's a lot of talent behind uh, Tui Molowau and Jack Sawyer. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, Caden lo- Curry. Yeah, Caden Curry yeah. looked like such a beast during his time. He got not a lot of time last year, but during the second half of the year, got some time and your eyes were drawn to him immediately. And who had a really good uh, spring here was Kenyatta Jackson too. Yeah. I think Kenyatta is um, wearing that Bosa number here. So yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and don't it's... count out a Mario a uh, either. Uh, again, like I don't know how deep the rotation goes, especially since we didn't see either JT or Sawyer leave the field a lot last year. Um, no. A bore Jared. No, it's, it's a bore. I've been saying a bore for years. I acknowledge that during the recruitment and all that. It's actually a bore. I had, I, I have, I have the pronunciation guide from the spring, from the spring game. It's, it says U H dash B O R E. Is this is actually, and I don't blame you, Austin. That was probably the first time I've ever said it correctly. <laughs> I may have just, must, I may have just trained you to 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 think I was right before. Your incorrect is conditioned me, Austin. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. I conditioned you for such a long time with the wrong pronunciation. Um, groomed even. <laughs> Not talking about Northwestern. We're not talking about Northwestern. Um, All right. Well, let's talk about the linebackers, Jared. Let's talk about the linebackers. Um, Surprise, surprise. How big of a surprise? I don't know. 
But both Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg returned this year. I think a mm-hmm. lot of people saw Tommy Eichenberg maybe leaving. He doesn't. Um, See, so we have a bit of a log jam, Kyle. At a bit of a log jam at linebacker right now. Yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of experience or a lot of upperclassmen in the linebackers right now. But there's a lot of talent behind those, though. But yeah, Chambers at your uh, at your will position, uh, Tommy in the middle or in the mic position there. But man, I mean, you got um, I really really like Gabe Powers too. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see much Gabe uh, this year. But boy, like next year, you give the reins to Gabe Powers at the mic position. Yeah. And then you, and then you and then you have and then you have uh Laurinaitis there helping coaching these these linebackers this year too. Not to be discounted. Yeah, it's 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 looking the linebacker positions looking good here. Uh Austin says Powers and Hicks next year. I think you see a decent amount of Hicks this year. Yeah, I I think um, so too. And I I just was just talking about how Jack Sawyer is not going to be playing that Jack position much this year. Well, I think CJ Hicks is who we see in that position a lot this year. Um, and and, and talking, you know, we're talking about Evan Pryor. Sometimes uh, a lot of Buckeye fans have forgotten about Mitchell Melton, who was supposed to be uh, a featured part of last year's defense, but got hurt. I wish we didn't have the Jack position, but yeah. Um, I think it depends upon who you, I think it depends upon who it's replacing. Um, I think, it's, I think it depends upon who it's, who, who are you taking off the field to put the Jack on the field? I think is, is the question. Yeah. The, the, I think the, the Jack position, it's, I think it's just up in the air right now because you, you saw none of that at all at spring. And so. It, I think it, it's going to be a, just a big surprise to us when we when we see it this fall. Is it is it going to be Milton? Is it going to be Hicks? It'll be Hicks. Yeah, I, I think it'll be Hicks right now, but would not surprise me if you see Milton, just depending on how well how well um, Milton does in that position. So, guys, I, I think w- it's the way I see the Jack position and how I think it plays out in the Big Ten specifically is. If you are playing, if you're playing a defense that is, or excuse me, an offense that is a more of a power offense, you need a third linebacker. And maybe you take the nickel off the field to bring in that third linebacker. In that situation, that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm hmm where you take off the fifth defensive back and bring in the Jack. That makes a lot of sense to me personally. Um, Yeah. uh, Again, what I, what I don't want is for them to take one of the four defensive linemen off the field. uh, To, to bring the Jack onto the field. That's what I don't want. Yeah. And I, and I I think for how talented and uh, athletic the, especially the the defensive ends are and the defensive tackles. Now this is one of the best two deep. You look at that defensive line group again, JT backed up by Caden Curry, Ty Leak and Tywin Malone, both playing defensive tackle, Ty Hamilton backing up Mike Hall at nose tackle Sawyer backed up by Kenyatta Jackson at uh, the weak side defensive end. If we're talking about a two deep, I don't. When was the last time Ohio State had this complete of a two deep at the at, at the defensive line? It's actually insane. Yeah, it's 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 been a while. It, it's it's been a while. I know. I want I, I want to say it's it's got to be maybe towards the end of um one of Urban's years that we've had this much depth on the defensive tackle. Yeah, I mean. You have four defensive line. Well, but even the defense, I mean, we've had insane depth at defensive end before, but we have four guys who I would feel totally comfortable starting at defensive tackle. 
like you could start the backup defensive tackles and I wouldn't feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's an incredible crew of defensive tackles. Uh, and I think there's maybe been years in which there were maybe a better, you know, these are the best four defensive tackles. I think Ohio state's ever had. I think there have been years in which there were maybe six defensive tackles who were better than the current six defensive tackles. But if we're, if we're, if we're talking four, four defensive tackles, I don't know if Ohio state's ever had better, but yeah, uh, linebackers, um, I think Hicks is both your starting Jack and also your backup will linebacker behind uh, steel chambers. And for what it's worth, you, you see rotation there as well. I don't think the rotation is exclusive on the defensive line. I, I do think you will see Hicks get his snaps uh, in relief of steel chambers. Um, it's, you know, situationally. Um, mm -hmm. good luck getting Tommy. I, I like, I like Gabe powers a lot. I, I don't see a whole lot of getting Tommy Eichenberg off the field this year. All right. Let's talk about the secondary Jared. Yeah. Um, I feel pretty confident, um, that your starting cornerback, your starting number one cornerback is Denzel Burke. Um, yep. That that to me, I think, is the most solid. And and I and I'll explain why, because you have ransom returning. But I'll, I'll explain why here in a second. But I think the most confident position I have in the secondary is saying that Denzel Burke is cornerback one. Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. Now. DB two. I think you're, I think you'll give the, I think you got to give the nod to Hancock here, but, but, uh, Davison has been, he's been really good. He, he's, he's had a really good. Igbenosa. Um, yes. Thank you. I was practicing. Igbenosa. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's. I, 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 know, I know there's a lot of talk about, is it going to be Jordan? Is it going to be Davidson? But I, I think, I think right now it's, you got to give the nod to, to Jordan though, but would not surprise Ooh. me if you see Davidson have a lot of um, snaps though. I think Davidson Igbenosa will start over Jordan Hancock. I, I do think that there'll be, I do think there'll be rotation there for the record. I, I don't think it, this is like a, all or nothing situation where one guy is going to play and the other guy is going to sit the bench. I think there'll be rotation there. Uh, but I, but I see the start and the majority of the carries in my opinion, go to Igbenosa. All right. So I think it's Burke and Igbenosa. Um, I think Jordan Hancock is, is your third cornerback uh, with Jair Brown, uh, excuse me, Jair Brown uh, being your, your fourth corner. Um, safeties, safeties are so interesting because it, it does feel like right now that they are attempting to make the safeties as interchangeable as possible. Um, especially the back safeties, like the nickel back, uh, the adjuster, yada, yada, yada. I don't care. It's a free safety who plays on the wide side of the field, the strong safety who plays to the short side of the field, and then your half safety, half corner nickel back safety. I, I don't, I don't care for your adjusters and, and whatnot. It's just, it's still free safety, strong safety, nickel back to me. Um, I think it's Cam Martinez and Sonny Styles splitting time at Nickelback. Uh, hmm, it's interesting. And, and, and I, and I say that um, sort of nodding that if it's a more run centric or tight end centric team, that it might be a little bit more sunny styles. And if you're playing more of a spread three wide receiver esque team, it might be a little more Cam Martinez. Yeah, I got 
I got Sony Styles as that the backup there for the strong safety. And I have um I have uh Jahade Carter um backing up Martinez and then in the uh nickelback. Yeah, see I, that, I I have it the other way around. I have Jahad Carter playing strong safety. Uh it's worth noting that um it at Syracuse, which is where Jahad Carter transfers in from, um it was Syracuse, right? I suddenly doubted myself on that. Um, he played a lot of different safety positions. He's very versatile. Um, so to me, and, and by the way, I'm not even saying Kyle's wrong. I, he might be right. It could be Sonny Styles playing the strong safety and Jihad Carter playing the nickelback. Um, but when when push came to shove and I had to make my depth chart, I'm putting Sonny Styles at nickel and I'm putting uh, Jad Carter at uh, strong safety. Um, and then again, these are these are uh, Jad Carter at strong safety, by the way, is the backup. I think Lathan uh, Lathan Lathan Ransom um, is your strong safety. Um, and then Carter's your backup safety. And at free safety, I think you have a good old fashioned position battle between Josh Proctor and Kai Stokes. Um, I'm giving Josh Proctor the nod at this time, but yeah. gun to my head, I don't know that he wins it. I, I think Kai Stokes has a, an excellent opportunity. Second year time for a big jump forward. Um, I think he has a real opportunity to, even if he doesn't surplant, you know, fifth year, sixth year, Josh Proctor. Um, I, I I still think there's an opportunity to steal reps. Even if he, even if he doesn't steal the starting position, I think there's still opportunity to steal reps there. Yeah. It's to me, it's Josh, it's Josh Proctor until he, until he loses it. Yeah, as 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 much as much as I think Stokes can come in there and and do really well, it's it's Proctor's uh, position this year. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel past history. Proctor's another injury guy, and and I think that again, there's an alternate history where he stays healthy a lot more and is better for it. Um. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, you say the same thing about Cody Simon, who we didn't even mention during the linebacker section of this podcast, who I, I like Cody Simon and like Cody Simon a lot. Um, uh, don't say this on the pod, Jared. OK, um, <laughs> you know, it's written up there, right? Um. Okay, but the, you know, Cody Simon, I think, is a guy who was who I think there's an alternate history where he is able to stay more healthy and he is, um, you know, able to develop a lot more and he is, you know, a completely different player as a result of having more developmental time from not being hurt. And it's unfortunate that that's how his career has played out. And I feel a, a lot of the same way about Josh Proctor. Um, I think there's an alternate history where these two guys are healthier during the course of their careers and they develop better as a result. Um, but that's that's not the the timeline we're living in unfortunately mm -hmm. um and that's that is unfortunately college football um you you get a few years to prove yourself and if you get hurt especially during those early years where the the developmental part of it is happening it stunts some guys to the point where they don't ever truly recover um or at least not ever truly fully recover and that's, again, unfortunate, but 
reality. Nothing you can really do about that. Injuries are just a part of it. Um, but yeah. All right, uh, Kyle, that's our defense. Uh, special teams. I got Parker Lewis starting at kicker. Sure. All right. <laughs> sure. Our favorite Aussie, Jesse Murko at punter. We got to find another, we got to find another Aussie beef, um, here soon. Uh, you think he's leaving early? Well, I mean, he's only a junior. Get, get one for, get, get one for, get one for next year to help get, um, get a year under, under his belt. Kyle, there's only so many scholarships going around. You can't, you can't spend two of them on punters. Unless of course you gray shirt him, which is a thing that there you, you, you do sometimes. Um, yeah. But you can't be spending two scholarships on a punter, especially when your first one's listen, if you're spending two scholarships on a punter, it's because your first punter is not very good. <laughs> All right. The most important position here, Jared, our discussion here. Yeah, for sure. The the, the f- guys who fair catch. Let's the go. guys who fair catch the yes. designated fair catchers on the team. The kick returners and the punt returners designated fair catchers uh, i got xavier johnson and evan Pryor at kick return at punt return i have a mecca buka and evan Pryor. love to see ennis get involved sure xavier johnson will get kyle his touchdown his return touchdown maybe i think evan Pryor would be more likely or a mecca buka Xavier Johnson's also a good option. And also like, if you're just like trying to get, trying to get that senior on the field, (laughs) then I think it's a good, it's a good spot to do it for Xavier. Um, The moment we get a punt return touchdown, I'm sending Kyle beer money. Like a punt return is great, but it's the kick return. He's really, he's, he's really jonesing for it's, it's, it's either, no, it's, it's either to be honest. And, and it, college football nowadays like how likely is it that you're actually going to return a kickoff to just with how many times it's just kicked out of bounds or or whatever now like, we're the only team like, that kicks them out of bounds you're, you're the uh you're more likely to get a punt return touchdown than a kick return in college football these days 100 percent um i don't i don't know why on kick return everyone doesn't just kick it as high as they can and have it land literally anywhere on the field ohio state on the field and have it just land anywhere you know behind the 15 yard line on the field you just kick it up really high up in the air the dudes are just going to be like oh i better fair catch this because they're going to be real close to me duncan are you seriously sending a voice message in the I'm not going to click that. <laughs> I'm not going to click that, Duncan. I don't even know. The audio routing on my computer is so weird at this point that I'm not even 100% sure that would end up in the podcast if I did click it. Fuck, I'm driving. Well, stop typing! This episode is off the rails. Listen, we were talking about kick returners and punt returners. Of course, it's off the rails. Also, we're like 50 plus minutes in. It's it's fine to go off the rails at this point. Um, I think he has his turn signal on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you listen to it? Yes. <laughs> so you're saying it was an accidental voice message? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that is so much hey, better. Hey, hey. Hey, I'm I'm proud of you for using your turn signal. I really am. <laughs> we know we now know Duncan's a good guy because he actually uses his turn signal. Yes. Duncan the good guy. Duncan from the good guy. All right. Um but yeah, it, it, it's it's gotta be um it's gotta be a wide receiver here as it typically has been for a punt return. So yeah, your your sure catcher, um, Emeka put back there. Yep. Prior, but yeah, yeah, I, w- I would love to see Prior back there with um, with Xavier, uh, in the kickoff return. Jaden Ballard, I think, is also a good option, Zach. Yep, yep, Ballard's a good one too. Yeah, for either either one, kick kick return or punt return. 
Uh, EE was a starter last year and was back there a lot. He was back there a lot, especially when it was time to like when it was going to be an obvious fair catch. You no, you're you're not on scholarship, Zach. I don't. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think you're going to make the travel squad, buddy. I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you. I don't think you're going to make the travel squad. All right, Jared. That is our depth depth chart projection for for July. Free camp depth chart projections. Um, everyone, uh, we'd love to get in the ramp up to the season. Uh, a few Where more we? Patreon. Four weeks. Four weeks. Kyle, four weeks Kyle. away from Kyle. from um, from fall camp starting. I was, trying, I was trying to launch into the Patreon pitch to end the show. Okay. And we discussed. Nope, we how, got four, we we dis- four more weeks. We discussed how long it was at the beginning of the show. Already. We already. Well, that was for kickoff. That was for kickoff. We're talking about before fall camp starts. Jared, leave Kyle alone, you ass. Friend in the episode. Patreon.thesloopcast.com for as little as $3 a month. I was already transitioning. He didn't have to start a new transition. I was already doing it. Dun- Duncan's home. Everyone, Duncan made it home safe. Everyone call everyone call Duncan's mom and let, let them know that, that Duncan made it home safe. <laughs> Donating three dollars to raise money for us to what? No, you, you don't get to do that or even know where I live. Ohio State runs a kickoff kickback. It's because they will be in a losing situation and need a miracle. I, it, it, honestly, at this point, I think the most likely opportunity to return a kick for a touchdown is on an onside. Also, give Kyle three dollars. Yes, give Kyle three dollars by giving the Patreon six dollars. It's actually more like six dollars and a few cents because Patreon gets a cut too. Um, so let's just make it seven. Everyone, I challenge you to give seven dollars at um, Jared. You can make a pledge to give the next three dollars to the Patreon directly to Kyle. Yes, and I will do that if the person pledges at least seven dollars. <laughs> I will make sure that three of it ends up in Kyle's hands. I promise you this. Give seven dollars to beat Rutgers. Well, what? How? How? How else? What? What better way could I say it? I, I, guys, it's it's three dollars a month. You can pay for an entire year up front. It ends up being like thirty two fifty or something like that because you get a discount if you do uh, twelve months up front. So I would uh, kindly request that if you listen to this show, if you watch this show and if we provide entertainment and if you want us to be able to uh, do our normal off season or rather on season production of like four episodes a week, um, then I would I would super duper greatly appreciate you uh, joining us over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And if you're just like, Jared, I'm not going to just can't do the money thing right now. Well, then just, just come hang out, hang out with us in the Discord. Just come, come hang out in the Discord. That's free. There are premium sections of it, but it's still the, the most of it is free. So you can still come here, join the conversation. Um, and that's uh, that's about it, I suppose. So, uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? We're already over an hour, by the way. So. I know. I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to rapid fire this. So, Ohio State got a commit to Miles Lockhart from Arizona, a Expected. four-star corner, four-star Predicted. cornerback. Yep, four-star cornerback coming to Ohio State. Jared is super um, cool when you get fired and have to stop donating for a while. Yeah, I, I never mm-hmm. took Duncan's rights away from him. <laughs> And then he was just like, Jared, I got a new job. Here's your $3 back. I was like, cool, Duncan. I appreciate you. EJ Liddell signing a three-year deal with the Pelicans. So 
EJ uh, sticking around in the NBA here. Um, there, Duncan. Good I appreciate you. Good, good to see him do that, especially after his uh, injury last year. So, um, hopefully, hope for the best there. And um, and a Buckeye favorite here, um, Mike Conley Jr. A now a four time NBA Sportsmanship Award. There you go. He offered the same to me. He's still a prick, though. Listen, sometimes sometimes the jobs go away and and that's OK, especially with Duncan or Austin, who've been uh, Patreons for um, a long time. There's there's always a bit of uh, a bit of grace, a little understanding involved there. Um, communication is always appreciated. It's just like, hey, Jared, here's my situation. Like, cool, pause it for a few weeks or a few months or whatever it takes till you get back up on your feet. You know, it's a communication that matters. And it's the fact that both of you were were and are longtime supporters of the show. It's like, so, so what? We'll pause it for a couple of weeks. It's no big deal. Pause it for a couple of months. It's no big deal. We're not a ruthless organization over here. We operate first on compassion. And in return for that compassion, I get called an asshole and a prick. But that's that's just what we do around here. All, all right. right. That's it, Jared. That's all I got. Uh, you, you Correct, Austin. I'm not a menace. Um, Jared will be pausing. Jared, I will be pausing from you. Uh, give all your money to Kyle. Uh, you're going to have to find out what Kyle's paypal his personal paypal information is to do that because you listen y'all give the money to patreon the patreon gives money to me i determine how much kyle gets it's half it's always half and that's our agreement but i could lie to him never forget that i could always lie i'll do you accept uh bitcoin cash kyle uh do you do you have a crypto wallet? I do not. Okay. Okay. Kyle do does not. not have a crypto wallet. So sorry about that. Kyle, do you accept, do you accept blood, blood money? money? Uh depends. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're not asking a follow-up to that. Tonight's ending music is a uh Columbus, I believe Columbus-based band called Harbor. Um uh, you can check the link. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can uh, check the show notes. There'll be a link to the song there. Uh, if you're uh, listening to this on the podcast version, then uh, just keep listening. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Harbor. <laughs>